The great poet Percy Bysshe Shelley once said that it is a poet's duty to bring the truth to his readers or to his listeners. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the truth. I bring you the truth about lemmings. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right, um, lemmings. Who knows what a lemming is? Yes, over here, a lemming is, speak up please. So the creature that jumps off over a cliff. Is there anyone that doesn't know what a lemming is? Pay attention, you will soon find out. So, lemmings jump off a cliff, say. Eh? Well, okay. well, I'll take it from here, thanks. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, lemmings do not jump off cliffs. No ifs, no buts. Or buttes, or tors, or crags, or capes, or precipices, or a seaside. Bluff! Enough is enough! How many people know that lemmings have an aversion to water and suffer from vertigo? Hmm? So lemmings will swoon in fright at the sight of a great height. They will not plunge en masse into a watery crevasse from a cliff top boulder, shoulder to shoulder, and a tightly packed squeeze of lemming. As portrayed in the 1958 Walt Disney nature documentary White Wilderness, the first gave occasion to the representation of the lemming as a suicide rodent of the vol persuasion. These Hollywood dimwits pay a bunch of idiots, as Eskimos to you and me, to go out in snow and ice, round up a couple of dozen lemmings, flew them to Canada, Alberta to be precise, stuck them on a dirty great snow-covered turntable, surrounded by cameras so it looked like there were thousands of them, then, in an act of supreme perfidy, because they didn't give a fuck, hurled them off a cliff, went out a giddy, in the middle of the night, no RSPCA inside, and to this day, the fallacious myth of the lemming as a self-destructive species has stuck. No wonder lemmings are sour. <laughs> Despite the lack of scientific evidence, the use of lemming to indicate an animal that travels in herds and commits suicide is well entrenched in English. Which I find totally reprehensible because lemmings are far more sensible than humans. Lemmings don't stockpile nuclear weapons. Or jump off cliffs after lovers' tips, but I've already mentioned that. As a species, they display far more propriety, despite female lemmings bonding in a matriarchal society that can be particularly harsh on the male, and I quote Sir David Lemmingborough, uh, after ritualistic mating, the uh, female often dances on the head of the exhausted male, sometimes causing brain damage or even death. <laughs> Which is pretty grim. No kicking back to the post coital thing. Wasn't good for you. Some of my best friends are lemmings. My wife's a lemming. Well, okay, that's not strictly true. She's actually a dirty little <laughs> vile. But, but that's another matter and totally unsuitable for you. But the fact of the matter is, we know so little about lemmings and their contribution to artistic and cultural pursuits, such as, for example, Pulitzer Prize winning novels, such as Margaret Mitchell's sweeping 1937 US Civil War saga, Gone with the Lemming, with the immortal Rhett Butler part in line, frankly, my dear, I don't give a lemming. The same year John Steinbeck wrote his famous novella of Lemmings and then following up with the Pulitzer winner The Lemmings of Roth in 1940. Other winners include Ernest Lemmingway, who also wrote The Vole Man on the Sea, The Lemmings of Kilimanjaro and For Whom the Bell Voles. Ask not For Whom the Bell Voles, it voles for thee. Harper leaves to kill a lemming bird. Larry McMurtry's epic western, lonesome lemming. He had he brought quirky tales of a Newfoundland fishing village. The lemming news, with honourable mentions to Graham Greene, so the lemming who came in from the cold, and of course, the J.R.R. Tolkien cult classic, The Lord of the Lemmings. <laughs> one lemming to rule them all, one lemming to find them, one lemming to rule them all, and in the darkness find them. And then there are the wolves. Oh yeah, that's films. <laughs> the Stanley Kubrick 
Kubrick classics, A Clockwork Lemming, Dr. Strangelove and How I Learned to Love the Lemming, 2001, A Space Lemming, Kevin Costner's Dances with Lemmings, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Lemming, Five Easy Lemmings, put Jack Nicholson on the map, and he got an Oscar tap for one flew over the Lemmings' nest, Jingles Lemming, One Man Stand Against Nazism, and Paul Lemmings in a Funeral was a bit of a Larxism, and who can forget Ang Lee's 2001 Oriental Cinematic Masterpiece, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Remming, and arguably the best film of all time. Mark Scorsese directed, starring Robert De Niro in his prime. You know, you know you want to start with me. Let's get ready for this. Raging Lenny! <laughs> Come on! Come. <laughs> I mean, it's tough enough being a Lenny as it is. There's hardly anything that doesn't beat Lenny's. Which is bloody convenient because, hey, there's a lot of them, isn't there? All four types of Lenny's. The red back lemming, the collared lemming, the true lemming, and the bulb or toilet lemming, and who would eat one of those, that produce offspring all year round, up to nine at a time, with a gestation period of 20 days. Which, for mine, would make anyone's eyes glaze, and that's about. Wait. Whoo! 120 kids a year. Father's Day must be hell. All those fucking little lemmings. Dashing about in overpopulated subterranean ghettos, dead, dead, or drooling in the corner with his brains bashed out by postcoital head, dancing matriarchal mama lemmings wearing stilettos, all that stress of tension, no single mother's pension. No wonder there's gangs of millions of lemons cruising aimlessly around the tundra. If they didn't fall foul of the stoke, the arctic fox, the long tail skewer, and the snowy owl, they'd be right here on the plane. But, despite the overwhelming banality of lemming fatality, I can unequivocally say, lemmings do not jump off cliffs. No ifs, no buts. That's the truth about lemmings. <laughs> Just a little science lecture for you.